tonight we are featuring the Lewiston Auburn area. I'm excited to be joined by Paul and Kate Landry from Fishbones here in the studio, who will be creating our main dish out of one local and abundant ingredient here from Maine, which is our theme, and two other amazing segments coming to you tonight, again featuring local and abundant ingredients from Maine. But first, Let's go ahead and remind ourselves why we're all here, but get those aprons, get those ingredients out, and we'll be right back to start cooking. We can save the jobs by saving the businesses. That's our mission here. What's important about Reup and the Sunday Supper is it brings a community of some of my favorite chefs together where we can all focus on trying to get some stimulus to the whole industry. The reality is for restaurants, we are in a situation where the unknown is what's really frightening. Help us survive. We'll be here for you. Tonight. It's a special thing to be able to be a part of the Lewiston Auburn Burns segment. Um, we're going to cook a great salmon dish for you all tonight, and I'll hand it over to Paul. Hey, uh, thanks again, Sarah, for welcoming, welcoming us. Thank you. Sorry, I'm having a hard time talking behind this mask. But, right. <laughs> uh, you know, at the end of the day, um, we're excited to be part of it. And uh, we've been using main products for a long time. Um, it's kind of fun that you can find all of these products at Hannaford. Uh, if you're out and about, uh, they've got a great produce department, they've got great seafood, meats, etc. cetera. Um, and, and oftentimes they're carrying lots of main products. So, you know, tonight we're gonna be preparing, we are gonna be preparing salmon. So we've kind of prepped this a little bit. Most of this uh, you can do ahead of time. Uh, we've got salmon, uh, we're adding tomatoes to that, some uh, Kalamata olives, some capers, garlic. Um, we've got some baby spinach. Uh, butter, lemon, and uh, it's going to make a really tasty dish at the end of the day. So we're pretty excited about it. Uh, really, uh, probably the biggest thing you want to do in prepping, uh, here's our salmon. I've washed it. I've scaled it. I've also checked for the pin, boi pin bones here just to make sure that we're uh, evacuating those so you're not catching that when you're eating. Uh, what we'll do is we'll take the belly fat off of that. Uh, that's just really a fatty piece and in the cooking process it's going to just cook down into really crispiness and add a lot of extra fat in your pan. Uh, and then from there we're just going to cut this into just portion size, just uh, manageable pieces for folks. And what's something you look for, Chef Paul? Because obviously we're always trying to push local ingredients. These are out of our beautiful cold Gulf of Maine waters. When you're out there purchasing your salmon, what are some qualities you look for in the fish that would make it the most choice piece of fish for you to cook with? You know what I'm looking for really is a nice firm flesh, no odor, light odor. Uh, the beauty about using a, shopping at a reputable place like Hannaford is that their, their seafood department is awesome. And, and they're going to cull a lot of that stuff out before you even get to it. So, uh, you know, at the end of the day, as long as the flesh is nice and firm, you get a chance to pick. Uh, the pieces you want, depending on how much, they'll portion it for you if you'd like, if you don't want a, all the extra knife work. But probably the biggest thing is to wash it, scale it, uh, rewash it, dry it really well. And what we're going to do tonight is we're just going to score the top of the skin. That lets a little bit of heat into uh, when you're, when you're uh, searing the skin. Let's well, heat into it and uh, kind as of we're it slicing into that fish, I just want to remind folks for anyone not cooking along tonight, don't worry. Kate, as you know, the recipes are all available at tastemain.com, folks, where also you can go ahead and donate directly to the Maine Restaurant Relief Fund. It's why we're all here, and the series is wrapping up before the holidays, folks. So please go to tastemain.com, check out these recipes. You can cook along with us, or maybe create this Atlantic salmon dish for yourselves at another night with your loved ones at home, socially distant and safely, of course, but what we're really here to do is help Maine restaurants. We've got four grant recipients to announce tonight, so the money is coming in, but again, we have limited time to do it, 
on that note, Kate, why don't you tell me a little bit about, well, Paul finishes, finishes scoring those beautiful pieces of fish. What's been going on in Lewiston and with fish bones through, since COVID hit? Yeah, it's um, been an interesting time for all restaurants in Maine. Um, Lewiston, Auburn, luckily we had a lot, quite a few outdoor dining spaces. A lot of us have a lot more space than you know, downtown city areas. Um, so we've kind of tried to make the best of that. Now, you know, indoor is kind of coming back into focus now that it's getting chilly. Yes. Um, so it's just kind of getting through and deciding what winter will be like for all of us. And right. um, I think everyone, you know, I think everyone wants to be safe and stay in their bubble. And hopefully they'll choose to go out in their bubble and yes. enjoy the restaurants. And that's the best way that you can support them. And you're lucky, I know, at Fishbones in Lewiston, again, a great town to walk around, that kind of quaint community feel there right. in Lewiston. And you are a beautiful stop off on a nice walk around that area. So, and Fishbones is, you've got a lot of kind of floor space, if you will. So this isn't just about supporting your local restaurants by going to Taste Maine and giving to the fund. It's not just about supporting your local restaurant by getting takeout from there on some opportune night per week, but it's also about staying within your circle, staying safe, walk in with your masks on, but be seated safely. These restaurants are going to a lot of trouble to make sure there's a safe environment for you, even in the cold winter months. Right, Paul? Absol and how are we doing there with the salmon? Hey, absolutely, we got the salmon ready to go. I think uh, that should be uh, uh, pretty easy. The, probably the biggest thing, as I said before, is you wanna have uh, everything ready to go. It cooks up really fast. So with uh, the tomatoes we've got, we've had those. We've got minced garlic. I did buy cheat a little bit. I did buy minced garlic. <laughs> but I also, uh, I, I'm also uh, making some garlic chips with, the, uh, with some whole garlic cloves as well. Uh, we've also got a little bit of lemon rind for garnish. And with this, uh, really easy to do. This is... Um, uh, creates a rind, and you're just going to scrape that uh, the outside. All you're looking for is the outside of this. And then once the rind is off, we're going to use obviously the juice on the inside of the lemon uh, to provide that extra flavoring when we make the dish. Using all parts of the lemon tonight. We, I love exactly, it. We parts. can't afford to use anything but all parts. So right. <laughs> uh, whatever it takes, I can assure you. Uh, the other thing you want to do is just make sure you're working safe and clean at home. Uh, you don't want to use uh, the same cutting board for everything that you're, uh, that you're uh, processing because you'll get some contamination there. So just make sure that you're cleaning, turn over your cutting board, rinse it out, have some kind of uh, sanita uh, sanitary water around, okay. which is just a little bit of chlorine, some water, and just, just, just make sure you're working safe uh, when you're cooking at home. Awesome. Thank you for the advice, Paul. It's, it's funny, not only are we getting incredible recipe ideas from the master chef minds around Maine through this series, but we're also getting some very good advice for home cooks like myself who probably need to be reminded about safety tips and suggestions like that. So we appreciate all the advice we're getting here. And again, and recipes for tonight and for all the episodes during the Sunday Supper series are at tastemaine.com. And again, folks, we are running out of weeks to support Maine restaurants, so please, while you're there, go ahead and hit that donate button. Think of it as part of your gift giving this year to give back to the main restaurant industry. Um, and speaking of, on that note, every episode we'll be getting back to Paul and Kate shortly to make sure that salmon dish is coming together nicely. But again, as we do every episode, we like to make sure that the re-up program is evolving and growing and a success. And to do that, we check in with our president of Omain Studios, Tristan Noyes. Hi, Tristan. Hi, Sarah Welcome. Taylor. Thanks for having me back again. Always good to see you. Uh, this is just always such a pleasure to be able to stand here and uh, tell our viewers each week how much success we've had. And um, this last week was really a remarkable week for uh, the Reup uh, Main Restaurant Relief Fund. Great. As you know, the Main Restaurant Relief Fund supports businesses that are restaurants across all the state, uh, across the whole state, all 16 counties and provides $5,000 grants uh, that help with the unexpected costs uh, that have been incurred by COVID-19 pandemic. We've partnered with Hospitality Maine to help do this. And just in the past week from uh, our last episode, we've had dozens of people who've donated and we've raised over $3,700 from private individuals, viewers at home who've been uh, watching the show just this one week. 
like you know, be one of them on the next episode that we talk about. Go ahead, Tristan. Well, <laughs> what it does is it brings us to more than 200 individual donors who've given, uh, who've been watching at home, and that's made up uh, more than $22,000 uh, from our viewers. So incredible. we're so incredibly thankful for your uh, support. Yes. And uh, if you take those, that money and those funds raised from our viewers and add it to our sponsors, we've raised $162,000 for our grants. Wow. Uh, How about for that, guys? $162,000. That's for main restaurant owners like you out there watching. Awesome. And this, this is made possible by folks like our co-presenting sponsor, Hanford Supermarkets, Bangor Savings, Oakhurst Dairy, uh, we've got Andrew Scoggin Bank, Cross uh, Insurance, so many others. It'll be Pizza, Clark Insurance, both Packaging. I could go on, but I, I, I'm really just blown away by the support that we've been given and continued, and even businesses that have continued to do uh, events at, uh, along the way, who've have donated proceeds from special things that yes. have happened. Uh, we've talked in recent episodes about um, uh, the flatbread pizza holding an event for us with a portion of the pizza sold on Tuesday night going to the, the fund. Uh, we've also had RSVP Beverage uh, just out of the blue donate the proceeds from a whiskey barrel that they uh, auctioned off. Cool, very uh, nice. cool. Another, another really r remarkable thing has been a promotion that's been going in October and November, still going on, uh, from Maine Foodie Tours. And I, I, last week, I was looking uh, at the Facebook comments, and Pam, the owner of Maine Foodie Tours, was uh, uh, cooking along with us last week, was making the Brussels sprouts. But while she was doing that, she was also donating to the Maine Restaurant Relief Fund, Wonderful. making a second donation from 5% of her walking tours all October and November uh, have been going to this fund. So Incredible. Thank you, Pam. People... You can always donate twice. I think that's the lesson here, right? <laughs> And well, what that also means for us is that you know we're going to be able to give out, as you mentioned, four more uh, grants uh, this evening, and that's going to bring us to a total of 18 uh, grants by the end of today's episode. That's across every county. Uh, something that when we started this show, we were so proud to think about yes. how can we create opportunity for every uh, single county restaurants and individuals who are so talented across the state. Those are $5,000 grants, as I mentioned, and. Uh, I think it's, it's interesting because uh, this next Saturday is Small Business Saturday. And oh. I think as we think about giving and uh, what it means to support our local businesses and shopping small, in most of our towns, uh, the most prevalent business that's probably there in, in terms of quantity are our restaurants. Our restaurants, for sure. And so there are many ways that we can support them. Go eat out, uh, you know, buy a gift card. Um, you know, and you can also give to this fund at tastemain.com. Um, I think one of the other aspects of this that I think is, is fascinating is that um, it's just we're receiving uh, people who've been donating all across the country. It's not just Mainers who are supporting yeah. Mainers. Yeah. It's folks who have this emotional connection to the food and place yes. uh, that makes it all the more powerful. So I think one of the aspects that I'm, I'm most proud of has been um, in the response to the COVID-19 pandemic has been just the way that all of our communities have come together, mm -hmm. all of our nonprofits, our oh, yeah. for-profit businesses, uh, you know, the response from individuals, and uh, it's just incredible. Non-lover residents, like non-resident lovers of Maine too. You know, yeah. you come here once and you fall in love. So thanks to all those folks out there too who are outside our borders right now watching. Yeah, and there's still time. There's still time to be able to uh, to go and give to the Taste Maine uh, Restaurant Relief Fund, and we have still a couple more episodes to be able to get the rest yes. of the way. We've Couple been more working. announcements too, right? Yeah, we have. We are about to make one, and you know, I. I it's really a privilege and an honor to be able to uh, share. This is, we're, like I said, we're going to be at the 18th uh, grant that we're going to give at the Tonight. end of the night. This is the 15th grant that we've given as part of this series, and for this one, we are headed to Oxford County, the town of Poland, and the grant recipient is. <laughs> Cindy's Dockside Restaurant and Cynthia Robbins. Congratulations Cindy's to everyone Dockside. there. Cindy's Dockside, represented there. Amazing. We are filling up the state of Maine. Awesome. We are. This main, this main board, we, as I mentioned in previous weeks, we're filling up these wooden dowels from uh, west to east, although we did go to Lubeck last Lubeck. week. <laughs> <laughs> we put up the board there. 
our, our hope is that we can uh, make it the rest of the way. We're well over uh, half of what we need to be able to fill this board. Yes. We still have uh, tonight's episode and then uh, several more episodes to get us up to the 10th episode to make these donations. So yeah. thank you all so much. It's uh, truly appreciated by all of our restaurant friends. Thank you, Tristan. Always good to have you and always an honor to be able to announce one more restaurant we've been able to help. So we have three more to announce tonight, as I mentioned. But first, we need something to go along with this incredible Atlantic salmon that is being made. And to do so, we ventured up to Auburn, Maine, right next door to Lewiston, to check in with Elise and Saab of Moonoy Brunch. They are making something delicious out of yet another local and abundant ingredient from Maine. So let's throw it up there to Moonoy Brunch. Thanks, Sarah Taylor. My name is Elise. My name is Chef Sav. We're here at Munoy Brunch at 1056 Center Street in Auburn, Maine. Uh, we are making a dish that is a main dish at our restaurant called Hashtag Hash, but we're modifying it to be a side dish uh, that's gonna go with the Mediterranean salmon that they're doing back at the studio with Paul. So if you're cooking along with us tonight, uh, you're gonna need potatoes and what we've done with these potatoes uh, and if you can get local potatoes that's really great Maine is just potato country so that's really you want to kind of tap into that you're going to need to cut the potatoes into wedges and then we are par frying them at 300 degrees for about four to five minutes to get them to this stage uh, you'll need salt pepper pickled serranos which is something that we do here in house we've included the recipe but if not you can find some pickled jalapenos at your local Hannaford's. We also have red onions and garlic that we've kind of done a really small dice on, and then scallions that we've cut into really thin strips. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna fry our potatoes twice. Um, double frying them is important to this dish. We've par fried them once at 300 degrees. The second time around, we're gonna do 375. And this is gonna make it really crispy. It's gonna give it a really nice color. And it's kind of what separates our hash from other people's hash, so. All right, so we've got the potatoes double fried. What's next? All right, so what's next? We're going to add our oil. It's gonna be two tablespoons of oil in there. So onions and garlic are gonna go in first. And we're gonna let that saute for a little bit. And then we're going to add our double fried potatoes. that. Just gotta turn that up a little bit. And then we're also going to add to the mixture our uh, pickled serranos. And if you're doing this at home and you don't have this already set up and ready, pickled jalapenos from Hannaford's is perfect. And we're just gonna kind of stir that around. Let that go. You want to hear that sizzling? That means everything's kind of mixing up and cooking. It smells good. It smells good. It does gonna go really well with that Mediterranean salmon they've got cooking over in the studio. And now we're going to add our seasoning. We're gonna just get salt. We're gonna add pepper. All right. And let that cook a little bit more. And then last we're going to add our scallions that we've diced up. Just to kind of give it a nice pop of color, add a little bit of freshness to the potatoes. All right, guys, so it's as easy as that. We really just took uh, kind of a hash dish that we do for breakfast here at Munoy Brunch. We turned it into a side dish. Obviously, you can use this for breakfast, pair it with a nice sausage, or you can use this as a side dish to your family dinner. So we're planning this family style where people can kind of pull from it uh, from the table. All right, as simple as that. And this is our hashtag hash from Munoy Brunch. You can cook it at home with along with tastemain.com or you can come into our restaurant and order it as well. Yeah, thank you guys uh, for joining us. I hope you really enjoy it. And uh, back to you guys at the studio. Thank you, Elise and Sav. Uh, I had the pleasure of spending the afternoon with them making that hashtag hash and it is delicious and such a creative use of our abundant Maine potatoes. So check that recipe out if you haven't already at tastemain.com where you can also donate 
the main restaurant really fun. And what an incredible side dish to go along with our grilled Atlantic salmon being made right here in the studio. So let's throw it back to Paul and Kate Landry of Fishbones in Lewiston to continue concocting the salmon dish. All right, well, Paul, like, what's I, next? like I was saying before, probably the biggest key on this is make sure all your ingredients are prepped. From start to finish on this dish, we're looking at probably a maximum of 10 minutes. So uh, you just want to have everything ready to go so when you do start, you can produce it without having to get into uh, uh, timely prep things that would, uh, is gonna slow you down. So probably the biggest thing we're doing now, we're gonna, we're gonna sear a little bit of this wilted uh, spinach right now. Uh, we add a little garlic, this is a handy mandolin. You can find one of these in your store or, or uh, your home goods store or Amazon or what have you. So really all we're doing is we're just making little chips and that's really what's gonna add the flavor piece uh, to the spinach. Uh, you want to make sure you have a hot pan. Can't cook in a cold pan. I'm adding a little bit of olive oil and then we're gonna just, uh, we're just gonna add some of these garlic chips and you'll know, notice the aroma right out of the gate, you know, and, and you'll just... Even with the mask on, right? Even Shana, with the mask on, the mask as soon as it hits. As as you put it in. And all we're doing is, all we're doing is really looking to toast it, toast it up and you can tell it starts looking a little bit brown. Uh, sizzles and then uh, the spinach this beauty of this product is it's ready to go it's washed and all you're doing is just adding spinach and we're just wilting it spinach has a lot of water in it so all you want to do is hit it in the pan and then you're just going to turn it you can you can really smell that garlic and all we're doing is wilting it at this stage of the game so you're not really cooking all the moisture out of it you're just wilting it and getting it ready You've got those beautiful garlic chips in there, and uh, we're, we're done. It's that fast. We'll add a little bit of salt and pepper, and that is going to be the base of your dish. So uh, once that's up, you know, you get it on your dish, you're ready to go, and that salmon is going to follow uh, probably in about eight minutes. That salmon's going to be done. We'll finish the sauce, and uh, it'll be good to go. Quick and so. delicious. Now, Kate, I know you guys have two grown daughters now, but this... Obviously, with Master Chef at home, you must have had some great, quick, simple, yet fancy recipes like this that really could bring a dinner to the next level. Is this one you've worked with a lot with your family at home? Um, you know, Paul is pretty versatile, so I find that um, through the years, it kind of depends what's popular at the moment. Yeah. Um, the girls definitely have their favorite dishes, which they always give us a list for the holidays <laughs> of things we have to cook. <laughs> Um, and, and I noticed, too, what you have in front of you is not only our garnish, but we're using it in the dish. Tell me, I, I think you have a secret of where this came from. Well, uh, luckily this summer we were able to take a few minutes and put in a little herb garden behind our other restaurant down in nice. Uh, Pine Point. Nice. And so um, luckily enough, the parsley is still growing. So we picked this this morning to bring it with us. Along with the rosemary and the yeah. lemon thyme. So yeah. we've been pretty it's fortunate. And we've still got chocolate mint. Uh, uh, growing as well. So it's been kind of fun. Chocolate um, mint. Well, let's take a moment here. Not only have you built that garden, but as you mentioned, Fish Bones, Paul and Kate Landry, co-owners, also now have a new location. Let's just quick give that a quick plug because it's in a whole different region than Lewiston, right. Auburn. And where is that again? Uh, it's in Pine Point, Scarborough, Maine. And that is, it's What's the name of that? Oh, Pine Point oh, Grill. Pine Point Pine Grill. Point Grill. <laughs> yeah. I see you've got some of your own spices here. We needed, yeah. we needed to keep, we needed to keep it easy so I could remember the name. But uh, <laughs> we've certainly, we've, we've certainly spent a lot of time in those kitchens. I'm sure a lot of restaurant operators right now. Uh, with the labor crunch through this uh, cycle, yep. uh, a lot of them are finding their way into the kitchens or their dining rooms to, yeah. uh, to help the people that have come back to work. So yeah. it's, been, it's been a big plus. Oh, well, good. Well, congratulations on the Thank second location. Much. And of course, folks, you can not only support Paul and Kate by going to Fishbones in Lewiston, getting takeout or making a special night with your COVID circle of friends and family, but also hitting up Pine Point in Scarborough, in the Pine Point region of Scarborough. Incredible. Well, just wanted to give that a quick plug. And cooking along tonight with us, which is really the name of the game of Sunday Supper, folks, is checking in with people at home and seeing how easily they're able to concoct these incredible recipes that are all available at tastemain.com. And tonight we have joining us from one of our sponsors, Anders Spagen Bank. We are joined by Rob Westhoven and Deb Avasti. Rob and Deb, are you there and are you cooking along? We are here. Thanks for having us. 
Hi, I'm, I'm Debbie. Nice to be here. And I'm well, Rob Westhoven. The aprons, guys. So why don't and you have the uh, the luxury of speaking with Paul and Kate, who created this recipe right here with us. So why don't you walk us through how it's been going in your own kitchen, and certainly let us know if you have any questions. Well, I was thankfully I was able to talk to Paul and game plan about this a little ahead of time because Paul and I have known each other for some time now. And um, I think, uh, you know, I, I, I am expecting some feedback from Paul here. I think we're doing a great job. We are. Um, Debbie has definitely uh, seen this type of a, of a prep station before. So I'm taking her lead on that piece of it. Um, we, we did the spinach in advance. So we're keeping, we're trying to keep up with Paul yeah. and we just put the salmon in the uh, pan to start sauteing. And is, is your home already filling with that scent of those garlic chips like it is here in the studio? Yes. Absolutely. I can can't wait till the aftermath on this one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. I'm sure you will be. Well, don't worry. We've got a segment coming up where you can make one of two cocktails or open that bottle of wine I see you're about to enjoy as well. Good call on that. <laughs> and Absolutely. I, and I just want to point out the connection here, Rob and Deb, is that not only do you have a special announcement uh, to make for us, but uh, fish phones represented here by Paul and Kate are also one of your clients. You are one of our sponsors. Um, you're really a big supporter of us. Why don't you tell us why is it so important for you folks over at Amber Scoggin Bank to support the efforts here at Reup Maine? Oh, thank you for asking. Yeah, so, uh, you know, in addition to, um, to, to obviously being uh, clients of, of the banks, you know, Paul and Kate mean a lot to our community. And uh, someone had mentioned earlier about LA being kind of a quaint town and, and uh, you know, Lewiston Auburn is a, is a quaint town of about 60,000 people. Uh, we have an excellent uh, and amazing uh, restaurant community. And, um, you know, obviously uh, our, our ability to support our clients and our local restaurant during a tough time for, for, uh, for, for everyone in the state is uh, it's part of our mission, vision, values at the bank. And, uh, you know, community is extremely important to us at Andrew Scoggin Bank. I think uh, Deb would echo those sentiments, um, you know, having the ability to live, work, and play in a, in a, in a community like Lewiston Auburn um, provides us the opportunity to, to interact with great folks and great business owners like Paul and Kate. You know, Andrew Scoggin Bank's been uh, serving the Lewiston Auburn community for over 150 years. Uh, actually, this year is our 150th anniversary as a uh, financial institution in this market. And it's clients like Paul and Kate and great businesses like Fishbones Restaurant that make uh, LA just a great place to live, work and play. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again for supporting our efforts, for being such a big part of not only your community in Lewis and Auburn, but across the state. I know the work you do. And it's so nice to meet you, Rob, and see you, Deb. I know we've worked together before. And on top of wonderful people like Fishbones, I hear that you also have an incredible announcement to make on our behalf. Why don't you go ahead and let us know who's receiving the next grant? We do. So, um, you know, I think that Paul and Kate will appreciate this, uh, this, this award winner as well for, for a number of reasons. But, you know, we have a, a local restaurant in the LA community that's been serving great meals for 30 years. And um, I am very, very pleased uh, with Deb to announce that the uh, the uh, Sunday Supper Award recipient is going to be Jerry Gagne and Max Grill in Auburn. Hey. Auburn. Hey. Represented right here, folks. Oh, amazing. Well, I want to thank you, Deb and Rob, for spending the time with us tonight, for cooking along with us and Paul and Kate tonight. Uh, we'll be wrapping up that salmon dish, so be ready coming up here shortly. But Otherwise, thank you so much for your support and thank you for spending the time with us tonight. I believe we're going to be able to hop over and visit with Jerry at Max Grill shortly. So we're going to say goodbye and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. Well, like I mentioned, folks, congratulations to our 16th overall recipient. And I do believe we have the pleasure of having him on the line to check in with things in Auburn at Max Grill. Jerry, are you there? Yes, I am. How are you? I'm sorry I had a hard time hearing you. Oh, no. Jerry, just introduce yourself and let us know how the grant can help support Matt Grill through the next few months. 
Uh, well, thank you. Uh, my name is Jerry Gagne. This is my little brother behind us here, David, and our business partner, Michael Peters. Hello. And uh, first of all, thank you very much for the grant. It's, uh, it's very generous. It's a great program. Uh, we are uh, going to use the grant to not only thank our employees for, you know, putting up with uh, the, the stresses of COVID for the past eight months, but we'll uh, probably buy some more to-go packages and uh, PPP equipment because that seems to be the direction in which we're heading. Interesting. Yes, I, I know there's a lot of new and unexpected expenses directly rated, related to COVID, which is why we're doing what we're doing. How did you hear about the Re-Up Maine and Sunday Supper? How did you first get involved and how did you end up hearing to apply? I'm just curious. Uh, you know, the, the folks over here in the Scargan Bank contacted us and let us know that we had been uh, nominated and we fill out the, uh, the proper paperwork and, and here we are. Awesome. Well, Jerry, I just want to make sure you know the connection here that we love to know that the main restaurant industry is a tight knit community, but obviously within each of these regions we're covering like Lewiston, Auburn tonight, there's a tight knit community. Paul and Kate here from Fishbones uh, used to be, used to run Max Grill. Jerry, you know Paul and Kate well, and uh, someone else that will be joining us actually shortly to uh, concoct some cocktails. Tom Ardia even used to work there. So what a tight knit Lewiston Auburn community you have. And we are so honored to be able to present you with this grant and have you join us tonight. So thank you for being a part of Sunday Supper with us, Jerry and friends and Mike and brother. Thank you very <laughs> much. Thank you. Congrats. Congratulations. Thank you again. And continue tuning into Sunday Supper and cooking along with us. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Wonderful. And as I mentioned, folks, we are heading back to the Lewis and Auburn area for a few more recipes. We need something to drink along with this salmon and that hashtag hash we just saw made at Munoy Brunch. So we are going back up to Lewiston and um, showing you two different cocktail recipes. So get your shakers and your ice ready. And those will be presented by master mixologists at Sonder and Dram, Tom and Christina. Let's go head up there. Thanks, Sarah Taylor. My name's Tom Ardia. And I'm Christina Goma. And we work and are part of Sonder and Dram in Lewiston, Maine. Uh, today we're going to be doing two different cocktails for you. Uh, the first is going to be more of a riff on a sour, and this over here is going to be more a riff on a spritz. Uh, so for this one, we're going to be having four different ingredients. So right here, you can get this at Fiore. It's the Syracuse Lemon Balsamic. This is a uh, French vermouth Dolan Blanc, so not a dry, not a rouge. It's right down the middle. You get a nice little vanilla from this. And then this is the uh, pineapple gum syrup from uh, Liber Company. And this is a local gin, one of our favorites, Hardshore, that comes right out of Portland, Maine. And we are going to be calling this the Hardshore Sour because Donner and Dram does love local stuff. All right, to start, we're going to be using our local Hardshore. Now, for this particular recipe, we're going to be doing an ounce and a half of the Hardshore. Same thing as well as the Liber. I wanted this for the sweetness. We're going to do a half ounce of this right in there. And then we're going to do a half ounce of the French vermouth. Which you said had vanilla, right? Vanilla, which is another kind of mild, can match up with some salmon, a little bit of the Mediterranean as well. So then usually with a drink like this, um, you would use lemon juice. I wanted to kind of change it up because a lot of the time with a cocktail you want a bit of an acidity to it, which you can get from lemon juice. But what we're doing today is we're going to use a Saragusa, which is a lemon from Italy. It's a balsamic. It has a nice acid to it, but, um, but not as much as you would get from lemon, which is already going to be in the dish. That's also a half ounce of the lemon balsamic. So we're going to put this all together right in the old glass. If you want to grab that glass. So we're actually really lucky here at Sonder and Dream. We have a glass chiller that we just use real quick. But if you need, uh, if you want to frost your glasses, you can put it right in the freezer. Not even a problem. Put some ice, maybe a little bit of water, and that'll frost it for you. And again, the recipe is at tastemain.com. All right, 
So let's get this in here. Right to the line. Look at that. Look at that. Nailed it. Perfect. So the last thing we're going to add is a nice, fresh piece of basil. So just put it in your hand, give it a spank, breaks up all this, the oils, put it right on top. And there you have the hard chore sour. Uh, the cocktail that's more for people that want a little bit an extra and a bigger flavored cocktail. Uh, what we're going to be doing next is a low ABV cocktail that's a little bit less for somebody that's going to want it to be calmer and not maybe be such part of the meal. So thanks for showing us the hard shore sour. Appreciate you. I'm going to go ahead and show you the premium spritz. First I'm going to go over what's inside. We have the Aperol, which is a nice grapefruit sort of flavor, not as aggressive as Campari, a little sweeter. I also have the 94 um, Drink Main Vermouth. It's an apple spiced vermouth that's very nice, um, balanced, delicious. And then I also have Cuvier Beatrice um, Prosecco, which is going to give a nice crisp taste to it. And then we're going to actually finish off this drink with the lemon peel that we're going to express over it before we taste it. And I'm going to go frost the glass. So just so you know at home, once again, we have a nice froster here, but obviously at home you can do it either with uh, ice and water and or just a little bit in the freezer. So I am putting three fourths of Aperol in the glass. This is one of our favorite vermouths actually, just coming out from uh, South Portland. It's uh, Lincoln and Maine. They have, as far as I remember right now, two different ones. This one actually has the apple and spice in it. So it gives a nice differentiation from another vermouth that you have around. And I did just put in, um one and a quarter ounce um, and actually a lot of people kind of have the misconception that jiggers are expensive you can actually get them pretty local they're pretty um they're more common than you think amazon something like that maybe hannaford carries it it's gonna be a long winter so if you have the appropriate equipment to make your cocktails it's gonna be way easier when you see shows like this that you already have the gear ready to go exactly um, I'm also going to be using this Prosecco, but you always can find, um, I mean, I know that they have a bunch of different brands at your local Hannaford, things of that nature. Um, so don't be, feel like you need to get this specific one. Um, and in that case, I am just going to pour it on the top. When you're doing this, make sure it's nice and chilled as well. That really helps it, keeps the bubbles nice and tight. So now that that's all built, I am going to take the knife. I'm going to peel, I'm going to get just a bit of the skin. Um, if I can actually cut it. It's a tough lemon. It is a tough lemon. Um, and then what you're gonna do is you're just actually gonna express the oils from the lemon um, and just kind of do it over the top. Um, when you do this, it just kind of takes some of the oils and like gets like the, uh, the smell of it, um, which is really good for when you're bringing it up to your nose, the aromatics, um, it'll help clean it up and yeah. yeah. Adds to the good flavors, changes the profiles. Yeah, so that's the second cocktail, low ABV. This is the kind of cocktail more in line if you're not trying to have one of those nights. Right. Um, and you're just trying to have an enjoyable meal with the folks. It really does clean the palate, gives you some nice underlying flavors compared to the first one, which was a little bit more uh, complex and kind of works with the fish differently. And again, the premium spritz. And this is the hard shore sour. Appreciate you all coming up to Lewiston. Hope you come up soon. Cheers. Oof, Nailed it. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tom and Christina, for concocting two amazing cocktails for us. I'll be making myself one of those hard shore sours later tonight to go with my tasting of salmon, which I believe I'll be getting soon. But again, folks, if you're cooking along tonight with us, we are creating that grilled Atlantic salmon, the best salmon in the world. It comes from our cold waters off the Gulf of Maine. That is being made to my right here in the studio. We also covered that hashtag hash, a unique twist on hash, using, of course, local and abundant Maine potatoes from Moo Noi Brunch in Auburn with Elise and Saab. Thank you so much for that. And as we just came back from Sonder and Dram in Lewiston with those mixologists, Tom and Christina, thank you again for the two cocktail ideas. Lots of recipes, all available at tastemaine.com. We can also donate to the Maine Restaurant Relief Fund. We are running out of precious weeks for you to do so, so we can help as many main restaurants as possible. And on that note, like I mentioned, we have four $5,000 grants we are giving away just tonight. 
We have announced three of those already, and I am honored myself to be announcing the 17th overall grant, $5,000. We're giving out more right now awesome. to our next grant recipient. Again, these are randomly chosen by our partners at Hospitalities Maine's Educational Foundation. We thank them so much for their efforts involved in this. And without further ado, the 17th grant goes to everyone. Wilson County Barbecue right here in Portland, Cumberland County. Let me represent with this and congratulations to their owner, Spencer Brantley, as I plop that up on our main board. We are getting there, folks. We are moving from west to east across our beautiful state. But again, to fill up this map, we need your help. Go to tastemain.com. Donate to the Main Restaurant Relief Fund. Help support Main Restaurant owners, just like Paul and Kate here in the studio, who we will be getting back to momentarily here to start finishing up that salmon. Again, folks, though, weeks are dwindling to the holidays. Perhaps make this your holiday donation this year. Help your Main Restaurant industry. For those of you outside of Maine, make sure that the restaurants you love the most when you come visit here are still here when you're able to come back and visit us by going to tastemain.com and supporting them today. I can hear the salmon is about ready to be grilled. I hear the sizzle on the stove. So let's get right back over to our kitchen studio here with Paul and Kate of Fishbones. How's it going, guys? It's going, it's going great. pretty well. Salmon Yummy. is in the pan. We've got our spinach all ready to go. Beautiful, nice, bright, bold colors for entering the holiday months while we're exactly. feeding our families. Yeah. Look how beautiful that looks, I have to say. So probably the biggest key, biggest key on this is you want to start with a hot pan. If you don't have a hot pan, all you're doing is really poaching it. It takes forever to cook. Yeah. And if you really want that sear on, on both sides, you want to make sure that the pan is super hot, the oil's hot. I've seasoned it with salt and pepper. You also want to make sure that the fish is dry. You okay. will not get a nice sear unless it's dry. So if you're, if you're searing scallops, if you're, if you're searing really anything, you just, want to, you just want to pat it dry with some paper towels okay. just to make sure it's, it's ready to go. So here, we're going to be uh, searing this for about two or three minutes, probably actually more than that, three or four minutes. We really want that skin to have a nice, a nice coating on it. Uh, the sauce is going to come together really, really quick. Uh, this can be done in parts. Uh, if, if you want, you can sear the salmon, set it in the oven just to keep things warm. You know, especially if you're having a lot of people over for dinner. And, but this is a great dish to do if you are uh, cooking entertaining. Yeah. Probably not the best thing to do in uh, today's day and age because uh, we're trying to socially distance. <laughs> right. But for the most part, um, it's, it's really fun, easy to cook. And we just want to check. We're getting yep. a really, really nice sear on that skin right now. Okay. Kate, why don't you tell me again, as far as what's been going up, up in Lewiston, we're featuring your area tonight. What's been kind of the feedback from your local community? Are you, do you have those diehard kind of people that yeah, come visit know, the restaurant? Uh, I think because we are such a tight-knit community, um, you know, it's often many nights, um, you know, we have to do contact tracing, which is a funny thing. And yeah. we're lucky enough, I was at the door the other night, and um, there were probably 10 groups, you know, 10 different little parties that came in, and I didn't have to ask their name because I already knew it. <laughs> and that, that's what Lewis and Auburn is a lot about. And um, we've been working in the industry in Lewis and Auburn since 1994. Wow, um, okay. So it's very special to be on this episode tonight and Aww. be a part of all the good that you all are doing, collecting this money and helping it, all the restaurants out in the state. Well, so, thank you. No, we, we love having you guys here as well. And heading into the winter months, is there always a lot of like good holiday traffic in the Lewiston area? Again, I love your downtown. It's very quaint. For anyone who hasn't visited Lewiston Auburn lately, it has a gorgeous little downtown. So tell me, just in the holiday months, where where kind of your clientele comes from? Do you have a lot of visitors typically, or, or do you think the local community will help get you through? You know, non non COVID, we we you know Lewiston Auburn does tend to swell. We've got a number of colleges uh, in the area. We've got two uh, uh, class act healthcare uh, facilities there as well. A number of colleges, I should say. A lot of the um, local businesses would often do, you know, large gatherings for their, you know, right. holiday parties. So, you know, that's probably not happening this year. But 
Um, we've had a lot of calls where they're just doing things much smaller. Yep. Um, some large takeout orders where they oh, call good. ahead and get a bunch of meals good. and pick it up. So, yeah, Good reminder around. to everyone at home on those meals you might be trying to throw together yourself. Call up one of your favorite restaurants, and if you're not ready to go in person, but again, keep in mind all these restaurants are working hard and spending the money to be able to have you safely come in just a bit further from the table next to you. But also, you know, get takeout. That night you might want to stay home but might not want to cook for yourself. Consider calling one of your favorite restaurants you would have normally dined out at and getting your amazing dinner from there. Now, Chef Paul, again, the recipe is at tastemain.com where you can also donate. But just walk us through. You flip those there at the end, Chef? I'm sorry? Did you flip those there at the yeah, end? Yeah, we flipped them. So you start on the skin side down and because uh, you want the pan nice and hot. And then we have flipped it. Mm. I'm going to double up on some of these portions, I'm sorry to say. But then you, okay. you've, yeah. still got lots, you've still got lots of flavors in the pan. Now we're going to add the rest of the ingredients. Let's add the, scall the, uh, the garlic. Mint, this is minced garlic. Uh, you know, in my world, there's never enough garlic. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> but uh, get that started. Uh, once that starts to uh, sizzle, brown up, then we're going to add our tomatoes because that's really the sauce in this pan. Woohoo! Oh, okay, sorry about that. <laughs> then we we're love gonna fire add, in here. We're going to add some, some uh, Kalamata olives that I've sliced. You can buy these sliced. You want the pitted ones. You don't want to mess around with having a pit olive for sure. No. And then our capers. Can't forget that. And to me, do adding the capers. Not enough capers either. The capers and the Kalmatas kind of add a little Mediterranean twist that to this? Is, that is correct. So you notice that, you know, you don't, want to, you don't want to overcook these tomatoes. You're just really reheating it. You've got the garlic browned up. Now we're going to add the white wine to mm. it. Look at those colors, Kate. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we're just gonna, we're gonna cook a little bit of that alcohol. When the flame, whenever you're using uh, liquor or wine in the pan, after it flames, it really, and let it reduce, it takes the alcohol out. So you're just getting that great flavor at the end of the day. So aside from our two cocktail ideas, we just got, this is family friendly. This is very, that very family friendly. That alcohol will cook off, folks. Don't worry at home. The you wine or liquor that you use to cook will cook off. Feed the salmon to the kids. There's good omega threes in there, right? Exactly. <laughs> and then, and then to finish this, my whoop. favorite ingredient. Yeah, the butter. <laughs> I know. I know. Sadly, there's always at least four pounds of butter in my house, uh, which is probably a good thing. Now, I uh, have a question because it's come up recently in my kitchen. Is that salted or unsalted? Because that this would make a difference. This is salted. I'm a, okay. I'm a, I'm a little bit of a saltaholic. Uh, I do use unsalted butter in my restaurants uh, because there are a lot of people that are pretty sensitive to it. But the key with adding the butter is you don't want to overcook it. You want the butter to slowly melt and, and, and bind with the acid yeah. from the wine. And so you're really you're creating what they call is a monte. So monte. it's just that's the sauce. You get the creaminess of the butter. Okay. And then. Um, and again, there those should be beautiful of salt pops of color spirit. come from spirit. not only yeah, well, the ingredients right. you choose, but obviously also finding them locally, which you can do at your local Hannaford. They support so many local Maine farms with their produce. But again, Paul and Kate have their own garden where some of these herbs and spices came from. So when in doubt, take some of your COVID time at home to create a nice herb garden for yourselves. But all those fresh fruits and vegetables create such a beautiful, exquisite meal when you take it to the next level with color. I love color, right. so and look now at the, this. The last of what we're doing is just adding that nice, fresh parsley just to give it mm. that color, because that's really what the friendly part is, is that we like the color. So this, when you finish, you're just going to spoon this over the dish. Oh, that is beautiful, Kate. Gorgeous. Is this colors. on your holiday menu this year, Kate? Uh, this one is not on the holiday menu this year. We did not consult with the daughters about this. <laughs> <They're> <laughs> have very, to have uh, pre-approved this I'm year, not, right? I'm not, I'm not far away from chicken fingers and french fries, and that's for my 30-year-old, <laughs> my crazy enough. Well, I know, know that they are quarantining from you and getting tested, which we all need to be doing this year to stay safe and well this holiday season, but also try to be at our, with our loved ones if possible. Hope you all are taking those precautions at home. This is looking absolutely de delicious. Uh, great combination of flavors. You yeah. can never go wrong with this dish. 
Uh, so uh, I, I would say bon appetit. Enjoy bon appetit. I, think I am you're certainly going to come grab on, one. On. Thank you, Kate. There you are. Get a little socially distant here so I can enjoy that. Oh, look how beautiful. It's one of those dishes that's hard to bite into, folks, because it is so beautiful. But I am going to. Oh, and again, salmon, a lot of people think of salmon coming off of, you know, Alaska and the Great Bering Strait, but we have beautiful fish in the Gulf of Maine. And I've learned it has a lot to do with the cold waters, create that sweetness. Oh, that, there is some sweetness there, those fresh vegetables. And I gotta say, the kalmata, olives, and the capers add that salty bite, mm -hmm. add that Mediterranean twist to this dish. That is exquisite. What a treat. Wonderful. Thank you, I'm chefs. Glad you're enjoying it. Again, hopefully, you are cooking along with this. We've got some folks we know, Deb and Tom, are cooking along with that. And we're going to check in with a couple other folks that are making this delicious grilled Atlantic salmon for themselves at home and hear from them firsthand just how simple it is to put this together. So, again, tonight, if you didn't, go to tastemain.com, get the recipe for yourselves, have a fun Zoom party with friends, make this salmon dish along with the other recipes we have featured there because this is wonderful. What a feast. Again, we have some more home cooks at home that are creating this salmon along with us tonight, and we want to throw it over to them and see how it's been at home experiencing Aww. this dish. So let's throw it over to Cape Elizabeth. And are you there, uh, Tracy and Mike Grayla? Hello. And everyone here, and I have my daughter, Helena and Liz. We are having a lot of fun. Daughters, Kalila and Liz, is that right? Welcome to Sunday. Yeah. Yep. So fun. So tell us a little bit about your experience putting that salmon together. And keep in mind, you have Paul and Kate here if you have any questions or uh, things that came up during your recipe creation. Wow. Looks well, great. we thank a lot of them at home. We had fun doing it. Um, luckily, we can read directions. <laughs> we didn't have a fryer, um, but it turned out OK. And that was going to be our question for you. Um, and then the salmon, we were just wondering um, when we cooked it, how we knew it was done. So that was um, another question that we had. But we love the recipes. and. Um, you know, Hannaford actually had everything that we needed and we cooked. It's funny because we sliced and did things different after seeing you guys and how you did it. Um, it's interesting. You can still interpret a recipe different, but um, being able to do this at home is so much fun. Well, so, your yeah. version there looks just as bright and beautiful. And I'm sure your kitchen is uh -huh. delicious too. Paul, mm -hmm. tell them a little bit about when exactly they would know their salmon is done on the stovetop. It, it really, it really depends on uh, how how done you like your fish. I mean, I, okay. I like medium rare fish, a nice sear on each side, but still a little bit of uh, a little fleshiness on the inside. Uh, salmon, when it's overcooked, uh, tends to be on the dry side. But I'll tell you, that dish looks fantastic. And and don't Thanks. worry, I I can give one recipe to all my cooks, and it'll come okay. out. Uh, all kinds of different ways. So uh, it really doesn't matter. It looks fantastic from what I can see here. So nice job, ladies. Nice job, ladies. Nice Thank job, you so ladies. much. And you are as lucky as I am that you are getting to taste it now that we are done. So bon appetit to you all. Okay. I hope you are enjoying a nice, refreshing beverage, adult or non, there. Cheers. <laughs> Don't, I'll have to pour my wine later. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so no, so a little bit about how you first heard of Sunday Supper and what brought you to join us tonight? So we are definitely very much um, involved with loving going out to restaurants. Our kids have been going out to restaurants since they were little. Um, we love Portland and all of Maine because they have so many awesome restaurants. And so it happened, we really wanted to show support. And when um, Roy Strunk and Omain Studios got the Sunday supper together, we definitely wanted to try to show some support. And the fact that we can be involved is just that much better. Well, we are so thankful that we were able to bring you into this episode, get you cooking along with us, but obviously be able to visit you there in Cape Elizabeth. And it's 
home cooks like you that make this show what it is. It's again, folks, we're bringing recipes and talent from all over the state for you to enjoy during these months. When we are at, at home with your loved ones due to COVID. But again, I think we might have lost you. That's okay. We are here to support the main restaurant relief fund so that when the time comes, you can go back to your favorite restaurants or through these winter months, you can safely go to these main restaurants. But again, there'll be limited capacity. So go to the restaurants yep. quick in those evenings you want to go out. Paul and yep. Kate, this is absolutely delicious. I just want to say one more time, those fresh vegetables from your garden, that fresh Atlantic salmon from, from Hannaford, the salmon? It's, uh, salmon is from Hannaford. It's a fisheries um, off the Gulf of Maine. Uh, I think it's a great product. I've been selling for a long time. The wild caught stuff is tasty as well, but it's, uh, it's also on the other side of the country. Right. We so. are so blessed in the state of Maine to have these cold waters and some of the best seafood in the world right off our coastline. You can go get it fresh that night. So to let's see to Tracy and, and your ladies there in Cape Elizabeth. Thank you so much again for cooking. You have full appreciation and approval from Chef Paul here at Christian. Oh, great. Great job. We created that. So thank, thank you. It? Yes, how is it? Take a taste. Let us know. Get us Take a, a taste. Get a fork. It looks <laughs> delicious. And these potatoes, too. We didn't have, um, I wanted to pickle the serranos, but we didn't have time. So next time for sure. <laughs> Dig in, ladies. Dig in. Mm. I am also excited to have you, I believe, make an announcement on our behalf. Oh. And we will give you a drum roll here at the studio, but whenever you are ready, Tracy. Okay. Um, so I am thrilled, honored, so excited to announce tonight's recipient of $5,000 grant that Omain Studios and um, Sunday Suppers was able to help um, initiate. And tonight it goes to the Snow Woo! Squall in South Portland and Heather LaRue. Woo! Yay! Woo! Yay! <laughs> Represented there by our 18th peg overall. Tracy and Mike, it's all thanks to you for joining us tonight, for cooking along at home with Sunday Supper, by finding those recipes at tastemain.com and supporting us. So thanks for joining us tonight. And we thanks, can quickly Sarah. switch gears. Again, we gave out four grants tonight now, and I am joined by the most recent recipient, and that is Heather LaRue right here in South Portland at the Snow Squall restaurant. Hi, Heather, are you with us? I am. How are welcome, you? Welcome and congratulations on receiving a grant from Sunday Supper. Please tell us a bit about how your business has been doing and how this might help you out. Um. Well, every little bit helps, and we're holding our own, that's for sure. We've changed our hours a bit and I'm full-time cooking and we're just making it happen. Amazing. And so some of the challenges you're, you know, facing as we head into the winter months, tell us how $5,000 could possibly help and get you over this COVID hump as we're calling it. Well, my liquor license just expired. So that's $3,000. That's, I mean, that's huge right there to even pay for that. Um, you know, payroll is a big thing. Rent, rent is huge. So anything I can throw in any direction is going to help. Well, Heather, we are so glad to have, obviously you'd be randomly chosen by Hospitality Maine. We appreciate their support. And we are so thankful that we can help you with that $5,000, hopefully get beyond some of the obstacles that our restaurants are facing because of COVID. So congratulations, Heather. And thank you for being a part of tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. So folks, we are wrapping it up here from a socially distant space. I am going to enjoy some more of this grilled Atlantic salmon. Well, I tell you that we will be back on December 6th with episode eight featuring the Bangor area and we're gonna have a takeout tango. Some ideas for you of those delicious things you normally have takeout for, but that you can cook at home and also to obviously remind you of some more restaurants to support. On that note, I wanna thank Kate, and Paul Landry of Fishbones in Lewiston. I want to thank Elise and Saad from Munoy Brunch in Auburn. I want to thank Tom and Christina from Sonder and Dram for those incredible cocktail recipes. And again, why we're all here? To go to tastemain.com to support the Maine Restaurant Relief Fund. The holidays are fast approaching and we'll be wrapping up this series by then. So please help support the Maine restaurant industry. Get takeout, 
go visit some of these places. They are working really hard and spending a lot of their funds to make sure their space is safe for you and your COVID circle, your bubble. They'll make sure you're socially distant. So check out those main restaurants. Have no fear there. Get takeout from them in the meantime. Support them by getting gift cards even moving forward. But first and foremost, go to tastemain.com. Support the main restaurant relief fund. Thank you guys. Why don't you enjoy some salmon? We're going to make much. sure Tristan, our president, gets a plate as well while we leave you. And again, come on back on December 6th. The recipes will be available at tastemain.com. And uh, get a Zoom party together. Have fun with your family and friends in a safe way this year. And moving forward, I just want to wish you all a very happy, safe, and healthy Thanksgiving. We'll see you next time. I'm going to dig in.